Hi, it's Swapna. Today I am going to talk about history. Yeah, I know that sounds boring, but I'm actually a huge history buff. I love both historical fiction and nonfiction, though lately I've been favoring nonfiction. I find history in general fascinating. And what I've realized lately is that I really enjoy historical biographies. And I feel like these give you really good insight into individual characters of history while also filling in the larger context around them. It's not easy to write an engaging and interesting historical biography, but I found a few I really loved. And my personal thing right now is feminist historical biographies. Um, historical biographies of women that you wouldn't necessarily think of first and foremost as feminist icons, but really are given the times they lived in and what they accomplished. So with that in mind, I'm going to give you five feminist historical biographies that are as insightful engage and engaging as they are just a whole lot of fun to learn about these interesting women. So first I'm going to talk about Catherine the Great by Robert K. Massey. Uh, this came out, I think, two or three years ago, and it was one of my favorites that year. It's so interesting. Massey really does a great job filling in Catherine the Great's life, separating the facts from the myth, and just showing how she was a woman out of her time. She wasn't supposed to become the Empress of Russia. She was actually a German princess who traveled to Russia and became this iconic, legendary person through sheer force of will. And I think it's so interesting to see how she became Catherine the Great. It's so impressive what she accomplished given her time and given that she was a woman. I thought Massey did a great job making sure this biography, it's never dry or boring. He brings the time period to life, he brings Catherine to life, and I really, really loved this book. Next, I'm going to talk about The Woman Who Would Be King, Hatshepsut's Rise to Power in Ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt. This is by Kara Kundi. You think if I was going to stumble over something in that, it would be Hatshepsut and not Ancient Egypt, but okay. This biography is about is of Hatshepsut, who is a pharaoh in ancient, ancient Egypt. I did it again. What is remarkable about Hatshepsut is that she wasn't the queen of Egypt. She didn't aspire to become queen. She was king. Like, this would be like if we called Queen Elizabeth II King Elizabeth. It's phenomenal and extraordinary. It, she was one of a kind, and she was the first and only king, female king of Egypt. And Cooney makes the, um, I think, very successful argument that given that she was a woman, she overreached. And that's why she's been almost obliterated from history by her successors. This book is actually, this whole biography is written from the point of view that Hatshepsut was a feminist, and that was ultimately her downfall. And um, it's really well written and engaging, and I'm a sucker for ancient Egypt, so I loved this biography. Next I'm going to talk about Catherine the Queen by Linda Porter. This book is about, is the a biography of Catherine Parr, the last wife of Henry VIII. I, I, she was married to him for about three years before he died. So Catherine is a widow when she married Henry. She was 30, unlike his previous wife, Catherine Howard, who I think was 16 when they married. So she was much more suited to being married and being queen. Now, Catherine was a uh, reformer in terms of religion. She believed in the Protestant beliefs. And while it might seem that she was a natural fit for Henry because of that, uh, in his older age, after his divorce from um, his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, Henry became much more conservative in his religious beliefs and started heading back towards traditional Catholic beliefs and practices. Henry did not relish a reformer in a queen. It's interesting to see how Catherine tried to shape Henry and how that ultimately backfired. What he wanted was a submissive wife, not an outspoken fiery woman. But then after Henry died, Catherine forged her own path. So it's really interesting to see how she was so different than a lot of other women of her time, but at the same time she was dominated by her husband and didn't really have a choice in marriage and in love. Of. And once she did, how, you know, she ended up with a pretty tragic fate. But it's really well written and interesting and engaging. And I think she's one of the more fascinating women uh, to come out of the whole Henry VIII, Six Wives madness. So next, Sophia, Princess Suffragette Revolutionary by Anita Anand. 
So this book actually just came out, but I can already tell you it's going to be one of my favorites of 2015. This is a biography of Sophia Dulip Singh. So Sophia was the daughter of the Maharaja Dulip Singh, who is the Maharaja of the Sikh Empire in India. As a child, he was talked into abdicating his throne so the British could basically take over the empire. Most Indians generally are familiar with the quite tragic tale of Dulip Singh, the boy king, uh, but I don't think a lot of us, and I certainly didn't, give a lot of thought to, you know, his children. And so Sophia was one of his daughters. She was born in Britain and was actually one of Queen Victoria's goddaughters. So she was raised much more British than Indian. She lived at Hampton Court and was actually quite the socialite. And it wasn't until a trip to India in her 30s that Sophia really found herself and found her voice and discovered what she wanted to fight for. She had two kind of pet causes throughout her life. One was Indian independence from the British and um, care of Indian soldiers and workers back in Britain. And also, and her second cause was um, women's suffrage. She was very active within women's suffrage organizations in Britain. And it's so interesting to see how she transformed herself from this meek, young woman who does what is expected of her to become someone on the front lines of women's suffrage willing to you know attend marches and rallies and face face down the police in order to fight for what she believed in so it's really a fascinating book i cannot talk about this book enough and i wish it was on more people's radar because it is just so good like it is fascinating it is it, it checks so many boxes for me you know like south asia is just a big passion of mine and then it's historical biography feminism you know it's so many things rolled into one and I really cannot gush about this book enough. So finally I'm gonna talk about Queen of the Conqueror by Tracy Borman and this is about Matilda, wife of William the Conqueror. So Queen Matilda lived in the 11th century and you know not a lot was known about her. There's been um, biography after biography of William the Conqueror but she's kind of been lost to the history books. So in this book uh, Borman looks over the evidence that's left and builds up this really interesting portrait of Matilda. And sh she shows her as this, you know, wise, compassionate woman, but she was also completely ruthless when it came to her goals and what she wanted. Her husband had a notorious temper and it appears as if, you know, she was the one who not necessarily controlled him, but she was able to manipulate him into furthering her own goals. And it's just really interesting. This is a period of history I don't know a lot about. I, I will, I die, I love British history. So it's one kind of one of my weaknesses. This goes so far back enough to where I don't know a lot. And so I found this biography really fascinating. Borman does a great job filling out kind of the historical details and letting me know what I what it is that I don't know while also providing a fascinating uh, look into the life of this complicated woman. So that's um, my favorite feminist biographies. If you have any suggestions for some non-traditional feminist biographies, please definitely leave them in the comments. I'm always looking for more historical biographies to read and I love reading about um, historical feminists.